morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Moses Kotane Institute lecture. Today we are bringing you a short virtual lecture in order to provide you with information as a viewer or listener, uh, information that will assist you in making informed personal or business decisions. Today we are talking about drones and we'll take a few questions or comments if time allows after this session. Uh, we have our guest lecturer today, Mr. Victor Hadebe, who is the program director at Mzansi Drone Accelerator. He's also a subject expert uh, on drones, uh, and he will tell you more about uh, what is happening in the industry. Um, welcome, Mr. Hadebe. Uh, please, can you tell us more about drones uh, in the context of South Africa and uh, for, for, for the benefit of the layman? or a person that is interested in, 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 in drones uh, is part of the business. Uh, over to you, Mr. Hadebe. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ellenson, and um, good afternoon to all the viewers up there in KZN and in the rest of the country. And I'm grateful for the invitation from you, uh, Ms. Ellenson, from uh, Moses Kotane. It's an institute that uh, I respect from a research point of view. I always say you guys are the, um, the knowledge hub of KZN and uh, we appreciate some of the work that you're doing, particularly in the research space. And uh, I hope today I could interest you to do more research within this industry, which is the uh, fast evolving, which is the drone industry. And I'm grateful for that. Um, can I go ahead with the presentation? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, what we want to do today, we just want to talk about uh, the, the drone industry. And uh, in this title, I titled it, I titled it um, Crossing the Chasm of the Drone Industry and look at the technology adoption. Like they say, my name is Victor Khatebe. I'm the program director from Zanzi Drone Accelerator. We help startups to, uh, to achieve product market fit by developing products and services that uh, meet the needs of the customers, particularly addressing the number one pain points of customers. Okay. So uh, in the agenda, which is actually gonna give you guys a, a broad overview of the industry in terms of where we are. And then uh, we'll look at the stages of the technology life cycle, how new technologies come into place and uh, how they get adopted, just like your smartphone right now. Uh, we're going to look into that. Uh, but lastly, we're also going to look at how we cross the chasm of the drone industry. And uh, I'll explain also what this uh, concept of crossing the chasm is. Okay. Now, the drone industry. Um, this is a, a, a report from Drone Deploy, which was, uh, I think it was done in 2019, where they looked at uh, where the drone industry is growing. Uh, as late as 2018, this industry was growing uh, phenomenally in sectors like construction, mining, agriculture, surveying and real estate. And lately it's growing into security and surveillance. It's growing into mining in, the, in, in those sectors. And we are also seeing public service uh, getting more and more with the use of the drone industry. You can see the map on the left hand side in terms of where uh, the use cases are growing. Primarily it's Europe and North America and uh, Asia to a large extent. But in, South Af in Africa, we, we can, we, the, the, the industry is probably much more developed in South Africa than in the rest of the continent. Okay. And if you look at uh, this Drone Insight uh, report as well, looking at uh, various areas where the, grow the industry is going, we're looking at platform manufacturers like DJI, which is the biggest uh, drone manufacturer in the world. It's a Chinese uh, uh, company. This is the one that is giving Donald Trump sleepless nights. Uh, there's growth within the software space. Uh, drone basically is a, it's an IoT device. It's not about the core aviation as we know it. Yes, in future we'll be, we'll be moving uh, uh, products, we'll also be moving people, but currently drones are, pr are pretty much more like IoT devices. We're looking at services, components, and counter drones and drone service providers. Okay, let's talk regulations. Uh, there are the regulatory environment, if you want to set up a drone business, you gotta go through these four hoops. Okay, the first one, 
you got to make sure that uh, as a business, you've got pilots who are qualified, who are licensed by the, uh, by the Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, basically, to get a pilot license, uh, you would go into one of the accredited flight schools and go through uh, that process between a period of uh, six to eight weeks, you would get your pilot license. But your company, even after, once after your company has been registered with SIPs, you have to go through um, the Department of Transport and get uh, the air services license. And then uh, you get your drones and your drones must be registered just like any aircraft in the manned aviation industry has to be registered. And finally, Civil Aviation Authority has to license your operations and you get what we call RPES operating certificate. By the way, the term RPES, Remote Piloted Aircraft System, it's a, it's a term that the regulator use for a drone. Okay, we prefer the drone. Let's talk about the bad and the ugly of drone industry. Um, there are a lot of rogue drones that are being flown out there. Drone, you're familiar with December 2018, the Gatwick uh, drone gate, whereby drones put a stop to flights at Gatwick and they created problems. There's an encroachment into protected airspaces. There's the issue of national security and um, the drones, you, we know how drones, they got their bad name from the wars in the, in the, in the Middle East. And uh, it's also a major risk to manned aircraft. If a drone were to collide with a manned aircraft, it can bring that aircraft down. And then you look into issues of cybersecurity and security and, and privacy. I know people are very concerned if a drone is flying over your property, what type of data that, that that drone is collecting. If we move now, as we know, drone is a new technology that uh, is evolving uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this Gartner hype cycle. Gartner is every year they, they produce a hype cycle of major technologies. Every technology, whether it's 3D, whether it's uh, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, it starts off as a technology innovation trigger. And then people will write about it and say all the things they need to say in the media and they move into what we call the peak of inflated expectations. But then when people realize that, hey, there's no money to be made here, and then people become disillusioned. I mean, we are seeing the same thing happening currently with the whole concept of fourth industrial revolution. Yes, uh, in the past two years, there's been a high profile expectations, but people are saying, hey, is this thing gonna put uh, food on the table? And then you move into what we call the trough of disillusion, in disillusionment. And then from here, uh, this technology could either die or it could basically resurrect itself and turn the corner and move into slope of in enlightenment and finally the plateau of productivity. This is where the drone industry is. Back in 2017, uh, there's a lot that has happened. Sometimes uh, various technologies, they take years to move from here to here, but the drone industry from 2017 to, to now it has moved into the slope of enlightenment. We're seeing some new changes in this. Now let's talk about uh, any, any new technology that gets adopted in the industry. You see, for instance, uh, uh, there would be early adopters, uh, particularly the innovators. And innovators, these are people who are open to any new thing. They will try this, but these people in the marketplace, there's just two and a half percent. And then you have early adopters, the people who appreciate the, in the, the, the technology, and they're gonna move in here. But you're not gonna form a business out of early adopters. This is the way everything is happening. But you gotta be knowing how to deal with the early majority, the late majority, and the late laggards. If you look at it, the cell phone industry, the cell phone industry has basically covered just about all this market. If we, if we look, if we basically take the Gartner curve and plug it into, into the, into, into the uh, uh, adoption life cycle, you see this big chasm, this big gap, where this is, we call the early market, and this is the mainstream market. Most businesses will want to be here, but obviously they have to start here. What is the importance of all these five groupings? Let's get into them and explain what happens. Innovators, these are the enthusiasts. They are not interested in seeing they're, inter they're not interested in seeing the product work, but they just want to try new things. And then you've got the early adopters, 13%. These are visionaries. They're willing to try new things. But then you've got early majority who are pragmatists. They want to see the full solution. They're not interested in something that is still being developed. And then uh, 
you have the late majority. These are conservative who play a wait and see game. They're going to be influenced by the early majority. And then lastly, these are the skeptics who will only change if they have no choice. So you've got two markets. You've got the early market and you've got the mainstream market. Drone industry finds itself here at this point in time. We are yet to move into mainstream market, which is why, uh, for instance, even the police services in South Africa, it's only now that uh, they are beginning to think about it. These are the people in the early majority that we want to interest. Okay, now let's talk about how to cross this chasm of the, of the drone industry. There's a book, this is uh, inspired by a book written by Jeffrey Moore, uh, we're basically saying you transition for how to transition from early to mainstream market. The great chasm, basically, uh, what happens here is that uh, that divide, this is where, for instance, uh, startup businesses fail and where because they fail to validate their products in the marketplace, there is no product market fit. This is where, if you look at the Gartner curve, we are still sitting in the trough of disillusionment. As you move uh, now, if we look at now startups, we are now going to talk about startups and professionals. If you want to get uh, build a career into drones or you want to start up your business, this is an area that uh, I'm passionate about because we are helping a drone startup to find product market fit and work in this industry. We are, we've got startups that we are training in this, in this space. What we're saying, the first, the things that you've got to do, you've got to fall in love with the customer problem number one problem or the underserved need. You've got to understand the drone, the drone technology life cycle. The fact that we are still now in the early market, we have not moved into the latter market. You've got to understand that uh, um, the, the, the target market and the segment within the target market that you're working with. You've got to know the current solution. Who's providing that solution? Who's your competition? If you want to bring a drone technology, for instance, to police services, to monitor protest, you must understand what technology they're using currently. You find that they're using a helicopter, which is very expensive, whereas a drone can do a far better job, much more efficiently and, 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 and very, very much cost effective. You gotta test and validate your solution in the marketplace. You gotta start with the minimum viable product and build your product from there. And ultimately, you gotta iterate until you reach problem solution fit. Just make sure that uh, your solution, it addresses the customer's number one problem. Okay, now let's look at the young professionals, technicians, graduates, uh, uh, people who are actually looking into this industry. The nice thing about the drone industry is that even if you have the matric certificate, you can go and get your drone pilot license. As long as you can pass the English proficiency test, you will be able to get the, your pilot license. And then, what, you, what we are saying here is that if you want to get into this industry, be an expert in your field of specialization. When I say your field of specialization, you might be coming from agriculture, you might be coming from construction, but you need to be a, a, a specialist in that space. And then when you go so that when you implement, you integrate, integrate the drone technology, you must come from an understanding of where you are, whether it's security, whether it's a construction, agriculture, you must know how you, you implement your drone technology there. You must know the technology limitations. Drones are not a panacea. They can't do everything. You've got to know where the limitations are as far as drone industry. You'll find that certain technologies are better off without the drone industry. So um, drones can't do everything. Be the innovator and early adopter in your field. If you are in agriculture, be the early the, the innovator, bring this technology. And I know you'll find that there are skeptics in there, but just be relentless and bring that technology and try new things because uh, we are developing new cases uh, more and more. I mean, we didn't know, for instance, that uh, you could use a crop spraying drone that is used in agriculture to disinfect public places. I mean, in future, you're gonna take a stadium like Moses Mabeda and disinfect it because when people get back to to, 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 to stadium, there's still going to be a need to disinfect. This thing is not going, uh, COVID-19 is still gonna be with us for the next 12 to 18 months. So people will need to disinfect uh, those places. And that is the new use case that didn't exist before. You gotta invest in a drone pilot course, okay? Uh, go from a, to an accredited school and get yourself an entry level drone, okay? 
you get a course you, you, uh, which will take you about uh, uh, six to eight weeks. A drone pilot cost is far cheaper than a, an aircraft pilot. An aircraft pilot, you're probably going to pay close to a million rand. But a drone pilot cost, um, it would probably um, cost you around 20,000. But uh, we, we are working to take this course online so that it costs less than 10,000 rand. So, but uh, you can, you, we, we can talk about it at a later stage. And then get yourself an entry level drone. An entry level drone will set you back between uh, 20 to 30,000 rand. You know, you get that drone and start doing some work. Start doing some work, but make sure that you do, you, you work legally. Know all there is to know about the regulations. Now, the regulations are a big issue. This is the elephant in the room. You've got to know what drones can do and what drones can't do. And then lastly, above all, have fun with this technology. I mean, uh, this is a very exciting technology. Uh, yes, there are concerns about it, but this is a, a, a highly, highly uh, interesting technology. All I can say is that uh, what we are working with right now within the drone industry is to, uh, we, we, we're working in building uh, drone startups, which is the startup businesses and SMMEs to become, uh, to get into this industry because this industry, we're going to move from the early market into the later market, into the mainstream market. And that is going to happen within the next uh, um, uh, two to three years. And uh, we, that's why we term this the decade of the drone. And uh, our question to you today is that uh, when you are in retirement, what stories will you be telling your grandkids? And on this note, um, I'd like to thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, Moses Kotane and Mrs. Tandega and um, Ellenson for having given us the opportunity to speak to you. There's a lot and lots that I can talk to you guys about as far as the drone industry and drone technology is concerned. Um, but I'd like you to uh, um, uh, connect with you guys. You can find me on LinkedIn and, uh, or you can find us on this website. And uh, yeah, have fun. And thank you so much, uh, Ms. Ms. Ellenson. And uh, thanks, for the, thanks, thanks for inviting us to join you on this webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hadebe, for that informative session. Um, I have a, a comment or a, a question from Dr. Ezra Masenya, who's saying, if you can uh, please elaborate more on, on the health, uh, on, the, on the issues of drones and health. Okay. Um, the, one of the use cases that has been growing, even maybe before I come to COVID-19. Prior to that, there's been a lot of testing in places like Rwanda, whereby you deliver medical, uh, you do medical deliveries. And um, I've spoken to you, uh, uh, Ms. Ellenson, that uh, one of the entities that we're working with, uh, the National Blood Service, uh, wants to trial uh, blood deliveries, uh, particularly in remote areas. And we are saying, maybe let's not just stop with, uh, with uh, transporting blood so that uh, when, uh, when a drone moves from a district hospital to a health care center in the further rural areas, let, the, let it go and probably also take some chronic medication and probably bring back medical samples to be tested and take uh, results back so that people who are uh, like chronic medication, they don't have to wait too long for, uh, for their medication. We can trial that right now. And the reason we're talking about uh, uh, probably rural areas is because the airspace is clear. The, the, there's not much movement there. That is prior to COVID-19. But as far as COVID-19 is concerned with social distancing, we've seen drones being used to address people. And uh, we've seen drones being used to disinfect uh, public places. So there are a lot of use cases. I know there are other use cases that are probably a stretch where people are saying you can use drones to, 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 to check people's temperatures. Yes, we've got a thermal sensor that we can put on a drone to do that. But uh, we are on that one, we are saying, hey, there's probably a much more cheaper way to do that than just put it on a drone. You would want to put on a drone whereby you can monitor people and monitor social distancing. But at the same time, you've got to be mindful of uh, 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 privacy issues so that uh, people don't feel that uh, 
their privacy rights are being trampled on. All right. Oh, we still we have uh, more questions coming in. Uh, uh, Mr. Kolobemona is saying. Um, the industry has a, pr a potential to create um, many job entrepreneur uh, opportunities and entrepreneurial opportunities, uh, especially in the coastal province such as KZN. However, the regulation and the le legislation on aviation is making it impossible, you know, for, for, for this to happen rapidly. So he's asking as to what are the future prospects of relaxing the, reg the legislation, uh, particularly on the entry level, so that we make sure that the SMMEs participate uh, in, in this industry? Look, um, the, the, there's not going to be any relaxation of the regulations. A uh, simple reason is that uh, if you look at South Africa, we've got probably the best safety record in Africa, not only in Africa, even in the developing world. We've not had a, a commercial aircraft crash in a very long time, probably more than 50 years. Okay. And it's because we have a very, very uh, strong safety record as far as that is concerned. It's easy to regulate aircraft. Drones bring a whole new dimension into it, okay? Because drones, um, currently, the, the, the air traffic uh, control system is unable to detect drones, okay? Because some of the drones could be as small as my fist. And, um, and we, we are also, even in the industry, we are not saying the issue is not about relaxing the regulations. The issue for us is to get the market to open up. If we can get the market to open up, the Civil Aviation Authority, we are saying, yes, the regulations are there, but they need to be enforced more because uh, over 90% of the drones that are being flown out there, they're being done illegally. And, and, and unfortunately, even government department, some of the government entities are buying drone services uh, from, uh, from providers that are, are not uh, accredited by the, by the regulator. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot that is happening there. So for me, we want to see the drone industry crossing the chasm from the early market to the mainstream market. We want to see more and more adoption of the drone industry and regulations. We can work around regulations. It can be it can happen, but we just got to be able to do it correctly because the last thing you want is a drone that's going to be doing surveillance, collecting information that shouldn't be collected. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I think let's take one but last round of uh, questions. Uh, Hinsa Mshane is saying, uh, good presentation. Will it be available? Yes, we will be uploading the presentation on the Moses Kotane website. Plus, it will be available via the link on our social platforms. We're talking Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and then uh, there's Ngosinati uh, Gomzwayo from Ilembe is saying that um, they're trying to uh, engage or use the drone technology, especially in the agricultural sector. Uh, I think this is just a comment. Uh, we have... Um, Okay, an unnamed person was asking if um, the drones can do deliveries in hospitals in the cities. Um, we have Dr. Felix Kutame, who was asking, what is the longest distance the drone can fly from the source? Uh, and then, um, yeah, I think we'll address those for now, and then we'll take the last round and then close the session. No, no, thank you very much. Uh, a drone can fly up to whatever distance. It's a question of whether the regulations can allow. Uh, currently, you're not allowed to fly the drone beyond vision line of sight. However, um, uh, licensed drone operators can get permission from the CAA. Currently, the longest that uh, CAA is allowing is 25 kilometers. But uh, until such time that they are proven that uh, you can take all the safety precautions, you will be able to fly 100 kilometers because uh, if you want to apply the drone technology in places like a pipeline, looking at pipeline, it's important for you to do that. And also when you want to do border control in the, where you're looking at long stretches, you need a drone that can fly 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. So that is possible. It's just that the, the technology, even the, the regulator, it's still finding its way in terms of how they can do that. And uh, by the way, 
Um, uh, it's good to see people like Dr. Mkhane, who's there. I've worked with Dr. Mkhane in the Aerotropolis space and the, in the area of education. And Mr. 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 Ngomzo, uh, we, we're working on uh, uh, trying to get an accelerator program in the Lambert district. And uh, there's a huge opportunity there from an agriculture uh, side. So that's the, there's a lot that can be done with the drone industry, but it's got its limitations. But for us, we want to see the, the adoption of the technology in a mass scale. That will drive, that will push the needle for the drone industry in KZN and in the rest of the country. All right, uh, we have um, a question from Advocate Mapipa, who's asking what's the maximum regulated weight the drone can carry? And then we have uh, Trevor Gavendau saying, as a biologist, um, what are the regulations to do vegetation studies? We have um, Timothy Fashion, who is saying with improvement in satellite technology regarding monitoring, um, he's seeing uh, drones losing out on, uh, on this. Um, and then we have uh, Lungi Lemshaba, who's asking, um, besides, you know, um, agriculture, uh, uh, construction and health, uh, can you use drones to collect um, data, say, from the business enterprises and so on? And I think uh, the issue of barriers in terms of license costs uh, it, it has been addressed partially, but Sam Gelokomo is asking about the costs in terms of um, the licensing because he's purchased the drone but it, it's a very difficult for him because you know he has to pay a lot of money for licensing. I think that's a round set of our questions. Okay, I'm gonna respond to these questions in no particular order. Uh, I'll start with the barriers to entry. I think uh, barriers to entry uh, as a startup or barriers to entry as a young professional who wants to get into this industry. Yes, to do a pilot license, it currently costs about 25,000 rand uh, or more. And uh, we ourselves have not been happy with that cost because for, with, 21, with 25,000 rand, I'm sure you can get a, a, an honors uh, a degree or whatever. I don't, know, I don't know how much it costs, okay. So we are working on digitizing the training of uh, uh, drone pilots, putting it into a, an online platform so that you can also even the practical side of things we're working on a simulation. So CAA, I'm glad it has given us a go ahead uh, with our partners in terms of, uh, um, although it's a temporary measure because of COVID, you can, we can train um, in platforms like this, but we want to make it permanent because right now, if you want to train and be examined, you have to come to an urban area for you to be able to do that training. And we are saying, if there are people who are in outlying areas, they need to also have access to this. And uh, yes, those costs happen to be a barrier to entry, but the biggest barrier to entry is regulations, uh, but for a reason. So you just need, that's why we said, you need to understand part, one of one, part 101 of the drone regulations. Go to the CAA website, caa.co.za, download those regulations, study them, and, um, uh, and uh, consult with the legal people and let them help you um, uh, decipher this, uh, these regulations. On matters of monitoring, yes, um, uh, there, when you talk of monitoring and surveillance of people, of course there are issues of, that we've got to be mindful of, like uh, uh, privacy regulations. In terms of the constitution, all, everything is guarded there. There's been a case in Paris, for instance, where a judge has put a stop on, um, on surveillance, on uh, COVID. But uh, here's my uh, 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 question as far as the issue of privacy is concerned. You know, there's so much surveillance that is happening through your, through your, through your, your, your smartphone, okay? Maybe it's because a drone is not doing it as quietly as Google does, but uh, there's far more surveillance. Right now, Google knows that uh, we are all meeting in this year. So there's so much surveillance. It's just that a drone, it still needs to get acceptability. We understand that it started in a bad way uh, with it still killing people in the Middle East, and people are very, very wary with this bed of prey that is lurking uh, in the sky waiting to pounce. So that for us, it's something that uh, we're working on. On vegetation, drones are very good. With, uh, with uh, the drones that have been used in agriculture, 
Uh, if you want to, for instance, uh, uh, target alien species, we can use artificial intelligence and the drone can learn how well, uh, you, you can even train it to identify certain weeds and you can spray onto those weeds. There's a lot that you can do with drones. And uh, um, I don't know, have I covered most of the question? In terms of the weight from uh, Advocate More People, as far as the weight it can carry, uh, it's limited by what type of a drone you're talking about. Some of the drones are uh, as small as this, and some of the, the drones can be as big as, a, as, a, a, as some of the small aircraft. So they range, uh, it's, it depends on what drone uh, you have. But the biggest thing about drone at the moment, the use case for drones at the moment, <clears throat> it's nothing but an IoT device. It collects data. That is probably the 99% use of drones now. Yes, we're gonna move into medical deli into delivery drones and ultimately to move people. But right now, a drone is nothing but an IoT device. All right, um, I think we ran out of time. Uh, we are one minute over. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rodebe, for that informative lecture on drones. And thank you so much to all our attendees. Um, unfortunately, we ran out of time, so we're unable to answer all these questions online. However, we will still remain uh, and answer these questions offline. And thank you to the support team. Uh, God bless you. My name is Tandega Ellenson. Goodbye. Thank you.